Uh, hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Doc! Uh, Emmett! Uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. Why didn't you wake me up? I tried to give you a nudge before I left, but you were practically comatose. How long has it been since you slept? Aside from being knocked unconscious, I'm not really sure. Anyway, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. So, how are the time circuits? Still broken. I've got a few ideas, but I'm occupied with other problems today. So, is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science, but if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure. Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? Oh, come on! Here, little static thingy. I can't reach it. Gotcha! Shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world of wondrous wonder on display. Because the future is coming today. Not bad, eh? bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? 
just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets. McCall it to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. The future is coming today. Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering, you haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he in his booth? It's the tall one over there. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie her job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal breaker. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. See you around. Algae cakes! How about an algae cake? Sure thing, mister. Wait a minute. You're the guy that makes the algae cakes? But I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey! You're the guy that tried to pick up on my Eunice! Oh, for the love of... No algae cakes for you, buster. How about an algae cake? One algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you! Forget it, mister. Enlightenment away. I think that's supposed to be a clock. I still can't tell what time it is, but I know it's getting late. I think I'm running out of time. I think I'm running out of time. And here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Callahan. What's going on here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty. Now. Wait a minute. That's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. It was my plan to get him back to inventing what he should be inventing. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. 
Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Harry Callahan really is. And where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town, ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh, where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Greeting! Hi, Trixie. That's techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now what can I do you for? Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster, and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't! Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. Thanks. Happy to help. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tan and Speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Hiya, folks! Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. Hiya, folks! Again, more 
Mortals, this is Techni, Muse of Progress. Hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. Now, the... Oh, hello. The amazing inebriomatic. Well, from what the boys in the lab tell me, someday we'll be able to tell whether people have been drinking just by breathing into a machine like this. Try it out. I don't think so. The Electro Pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. Now can you- Hiya, folks! Okay, call me a snoop. Wax. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Techni News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. About that plan. I seem to have momentarily lost track of Emmett. Do you have any idea where I might find him? You lost him? You were supposed to keep him distracted. Oh, I have been. He's just uh, wandered off. Well, go look for him. I've got my hands full with Parker. I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. What details? All I'm supposed to do is use my pole with Detective Parker to get Emmett's demonstration cancelled while you keep Emmett distracted. You are keeping him distracted, aren't you? Oh, yes. He's a very distractible young man. Oh, that's what I keep telling everyone. Why are you saying all those terrible things about Emmett's friend? Young comrade Shmirnov, you were the one who told me about his vile deeds. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking. Wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, 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 pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh... That was the dog's fault. 
If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Conversation terminated. Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in pond scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! I don't even like algae cakes, but free samples are free samples. A lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Act casual. He's coming back. Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This will only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for hey. that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's got to be around here somewhere. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. How about an algae cake? One algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you! Forget it, mister. Hey, Artie. Have you seen Emmett? He isn't at his booth. Odd. Well, he hasn't left the hall. I would have seen him. I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last-minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic what's for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. See you around. Nah. Convention special to... Enlightenment awaits you. I don't think so. Excuse me, Mr. Dudo, Jacques Dudo, at your service. 
I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A distracted look? That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were added into the house of glass. Great, thanks. Mr. Duto? Oui? Could I get a ride in that bathosphere? Certainement, if you've got a ticket. Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. Thank you, monsieur. I hope you will find your trip to the bottom of the sea just like me. Monsieur has a way with words. Mr. Duto? Oui? Jacques Duto, famous diver. So you're some kind of celebrity? I do not like to brag, but uh, I have a small following, yes. I guess people are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less, uh, uh, demanding. I guess people are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less, uh, uh, demanding. See you around. Come out of there! Don't listen to him! Perfect. Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him! He he's crazy! I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in. Or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. Something's blocking it. Something's blocking it.
Damn it. Where'd you take him now, Doc? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained. But I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a tall, thin, older gentleman. He might have been with a tall, thin, younger gentleman. I know just who you're talking about. I just left not a minute ago. If you hurry, you might catch them. Take off your helmet. I prefer to leave it on. The inland air is difficult on my sinuses. Hmm. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of uh, marine biology. But I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with Stop! him? Stop! Help! I'm being attacked! Harry! What are you doing? You can't assault the exhibitors. You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boy's obviously, uh, confused. I'll say he is. You want I should toss him out on his ear? That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jock Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. It's... Please, keep it down. The Expo went through a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duteau. We can't afford to antagonize him. But... If you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm gonna have you expelled from the hall. Where did you stash Emmett? In the diving bell? It's called... A bathosphere. Aha! So Emmett is in the bathosphere. I don't know what you're talking about. Professor Duteau, huh? At your service. Hmm. You're not gonna get away with this, you know. As they say in my country, que sera, sera. Mm -hmm. Here's my ticket. I want to see inside that bathosphere. I don't think so. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the, the, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. Oh, give me a break. Hey, Artie. This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure. That's a P ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm. There must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Professor Duteau, this young man claims you refuse to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the bath sphere. Mon dieu, what is the matter? The gears, uh, they must have become stuck. I am afraid I cannot raise the bathosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on the problem. Perhaps if you come back later. Come down, please. Step back! You're crimping the hose! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit, hey folks? 
If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future. Right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. It's an old nautical superstition that crimped halls means imminent doom. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. There's... Hey! I'm just gonna keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you wouldn't. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? I'm just gonna keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you wouldn't. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? Emmett gets no air until you raise the bathosphere. Uh, Emmett? Who? Emmett, you. Emmett gets no air until you raise the bathosphere. Uh, Emmett? Who? Emmett, you. You ready to drop the act now, Jacques Duteau, a.k.a. Carl Sagan, a.k.a. No! You ready to drop the act now, Jacques Duteau, a.k.a. Carl Sagan, a.k.a. No! I'm just gonna keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you wouldn't. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? You know what happens when the air runs out, to both of you. Step off the hole! I command you uncrimp that hose! Funny. You'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I... I don't know wh what you're t talking about. It's as if you two were connected somehow. Step off the holes. Raise the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it. Then neither will I. For long, the years, they have become unstuck. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. Let's get you out of there. Huh? Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Hey, you! Hey, he just took that guy's wallet! I think he took his wallet! Oh, remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before... Funny thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush, I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where'd he go? Do you know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. No, oh, I know how that is. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress. And it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are gold. Wish me luck. I don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown! Objection! Objection!
Baron, Your Honor. I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of Von Emmett Lethra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity. I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father. Where is he? Hand him over this instant! The longer you hold out, the harder it's going to- Emmett, shh. Don't give me away. I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. Just jump in the levitator and go. What's he gonna do? Shoot me down with an anti-aircraft gun? Come on, Emmett. You can't miss your big moment. You don't look very dignified crouching down there, you know. Better undignified than dead. Let me talk to him. Emmett, are you up there? <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Emmett's gone. You just missed him. Young man, I've been sitting on the bench of Hill Valley Criminal Court for 15 years. I can smell a dissembler a mile away. Now, are you going to turn him over, or will I have to use force? Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not going to say anything... So he is up there with you. Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second. You dare to disobey it. I want to speak to my son. Emmett's not ready to talk to you. Uh, directly. Oh, my God. I suppose you're his mouthpiece. I guess so, yeah. You can't talk him out of it. His mind is made up. So, if talking won't work, there's always threshing. If I can say so, sir, the problem is, is you're coming on too strong. You intimidate him. I don't intimidate him enough. That's the problem. Can't you two have it out later? You mean... After he's gone through with this ridiculous stunt? Yeah? No! If I can say so, sir, the problem is, is you're coming on too strong. You intimidate him. I don't intimidate him enough. That's the problem. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. Fear! Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Just go deal with him. What have you got to lose? That's what they said to Custer. Just go deal with them. What have you got to lose? That's what they said to Custer. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. I ain't counting to fo- So, is your client prepared to make a statement? He says it's no use talking to you. You never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like Let's to be young. You don't know what it's You're like to have dreams, to have ambitions so great and so powerful that they've got a life of their own. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they gallop on where they must. This is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. 
I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. And it's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay, but if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kinda... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, and maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it there are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language with only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me! And I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to. Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Emmett, here to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? Deep down, he's just worried about you hurting yourself. No amount of physical pain could equal the pain he's already inflicted to my spirit. He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No. Next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride. Okay, I, I get it. And so does he. But what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. May I come up? So... You think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I am here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of him there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator... Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator!
Hey, stop! Get back here! Okay. I thought I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before. No, don't come any closer. Doc. Go away. But... Move. Move. Marty. Oh my god! Doc! Say something. Chromium, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll get, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean... I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc, come back. Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! And you're, you're not discouraged? Discouraged? By what? You mean what happened in there? Oh, that was a learning experience. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? It's a long story. Let's just say I, uh, I lost somebody. Oh, how sad. Anyone I know? It was, uh, Carl Sagan. What? The guy who tried to hire me in there? You were friends with him? Strange. But how? Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... But there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. Okay, here goes. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. 
Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? I guarantee it. Same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever. But what are you doing in 1931? I came to rescue you. Teenage me? No, you, you. But then teenage you got mixed up in it. See, you were in jail and... Never mind. It's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his papa in another grave. So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was great grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait, Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it, it made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys. Do you mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. H how Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. One 
Well, now, you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. 